Amen, amen, amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump us right into our time of preaching. Um, I'm so excited about this theme that uh, Pastor Tanisha, Pastor Donna, uh, uh, Minister Mike, Minister Lauren, and, and others, uh, Sister Teresa, uh, who have helped us to think a little bit about the year 2022 and what we are hoping uh, our time of preaching, teaching, discipleship will afford us. Uh, we are certainly cognizant that uh, this is the second almost full calendar year we have been in a global pandemic. Uh, we have experienced uh, such tumult, such uh, a radical shift of our cultural and 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 uh, 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 material day-to-day uh, -day living. Uh, our our schedules have been interrupted. Our our equilibriums, our relationships, our children, schools, jobs, hospitals, uh, everything has been interrupted. And and uh, one of the things that I am certainly cognizant of is that there will always be a rush to try and return to some normalcy, as we hear some saying. Uh, but I want to suggest that. Uh, when radical shifts and disruptions happen in our lives, uh, we ought to take our time and do a little resetting and allow ourselves to feel our way through this new season. Allow ourselves an opportunity to, 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 to rethink and to recalibrate, uh, to uh, make sure that we are not jumping back into a rhythm of life that may in and of itself not been sustainable to begin with. That we are not uh, investing ourselves in a culture of, 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 of living that, that is not sustainable. That in many respects, sometimes even the most uh, difficult disruptions offer you and I an opportunity to do something new. And I do believe that uh, the confluence of this pandemic season, this new year, and certainly this holy uh, season of Christmas wrapping up uh, affords us a, a, a very interesting uh, intersection around reflecting on the new things that God may be inviting us to do. Uh, not just externally, but also internally, not just related to our vocation, but also related to our uh, our unique uh, uh, contributions in the world, not just related to uh, our own selves, but also related to the relationships we are called to steward. And so uh, we're going to take a, a few moments to look at the book of Acts chapter Number three, we're going to uh, you know, allow this passage to kind of be the bedrock by which we pull the theme uh, for this year from a, a, a theme about a year of refreshing. Um, we're going to invite all of us to imagine what would it look like for us to refresh ourselves, to refresh our way of thinking, our way of living. Uh, not just in uh, the sense of how we live, but also uh, thinking about the practices we must engage in in order to live more fully into the will and the ways of God. That uh, there is often an opportunity for us to refresh ourselves. And, and that, 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 that is going to be the theme of not just this sermon, but uh, a good chunk of the year, a year of refreshing, and I hope to spend a few moments uh, just beginning to unpack some of this. So as our preaching and teaching happens over the next several weeks and months, uh, as we make our way into a time of consecration, we can all have some context for what I am hoping God can do through us as a church and an extended community of followers of Jesus. Acts chapter number three, Verse number 17, and the scripture says like this, And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, God has thus fulfilled. Verse number 19, 
you find uh, this is Peter speaking uh, to those who are in the temple right after the, the uh, crucifixion and uh, resurrection and ascension of Jesus. And the disciples are trying to figure out how to live right in light of this whole new reality. Verse number 19, uh, Peter was good in saying these words over and over again. Repent, therefore. Somebody say repent. Repent. Make a 180 degree turn. Repent and turn back. Uh, if I were to add uh, uh, a qualifier to that uh, to help build out what the uh, uh, Apostle Peter is saying, turn back to God so that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that God may send the Christ slash the Messiah, the deliverer, the savior appointed for you whose name is Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Come on, let us say thanks be to God. And so we will spend a few moments just speaking and teaching about uh, this idea that we are entering a time of refreshing, a time of refreshing. God bless the word that has been read for us, the people of God. We invite you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing. That makes preaching and teaching easy. And we'll say, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Come on, just put in the chat, I am ready for a refreshing. I'm ready. Or dare I say, I need to get ready for a refreshing. Now, a couple of weeks ago on Christmas Sunday, uh, we certainly spent time talking about uh, that appearances mean everything. Speaking specifically about this idea that Christ showing up in our lives, it means everything. Uh, that Christ appearing and, and making Christ's self known to us uh, is uh, a, 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 a ultimate moment in the life cycle and the journey of every human being. That the moment you have this encounter with God, this encounter with the, the, the Savior, the one who has borne our burdens, the one who has promised to make all things new, it literally brings to us a whole new spectrum of possibilities. It teaches us how to live differently. It teaches us how to love more deeply. It teaches us how to uh, imagine a world that has yet to be realized. And so what I am always excited about Christmas, uh, the time where the church sets aside to remember and honor and celebrate the birth of Jesus, uh, on the heels of Christmas, we see New Year's uh, Day uh, ushering us into now an opportunity to not just uh, reflect on a spiritual significance, but also the significance of new opportunities being laid out for you and I. New Year's always gives you and I the opportunity to start what has yet to begin. It gives us an opportunity to finish what has been left incomplete. It gives you and I the opportunity to jettison that which lingers from our immediate past. And it also allows us to aspire for greater than what we have experienced as commonplace. A new year reminds you and I that although we are bound by time, meaning we are uh, people who live in time. Jesus came to the earth, the eternal one, and was bound by our time and place. We are always reminded that when a new year rolls around, there is a certain sense of infinity at work. That time, although it is uh, a form of, of finitude, it is also boundless. That you and I uh, live in time, but we are also aware that time keeps rolling and going. And so the question that I always wrestle with, and I hope you wrestle with when the new year rolls around, 
is what are we to do with both the limits of time and the infinite possibilities that time affords us access? How will we, as the scripture says, redeem the time? How will we make best use of this time? What is required of us so we do not squander this time? And clearly for all of us, all literally across the world, we have seen a fascinating, a fascinating uh, uh, reality that the world with all of its geographic diversity has become now a global village in that you and I and those who live in other parts of the world we will never meet uh, share the kind of challenges related to uh, COVID-19, the challenges related to economic instability, the challenges related to ecological disasters, the challenges related uh, to the kind of militarism and war that is literally uh, uh, festering in parts of the world, the, the famine, the food shortages, the poisoning of water, the wildfires. We have now become aware and cognizant that we are a global village and that while we may want to build all of these walls to separate ourselves, that the world is groaning and moaning as the scripture says, for the revelation of God's work and activity among us. This reality, child of God, I hope is not lost upon you and I because we are literally God's agents in the world. All through Jesus' life, he talks about how we are the salt of the earth. We uh, must realize that we are the light of the world, that we are the epistles that are read by other human beings, the letters that God has written on our hearts so others can see and believe there is more to them than the, 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 the stark reality that they must deal with on a daily basis. And, and I, I want you and I to, to be cognizant of all of this. Why? Because... In moments where we begin to wrestle with the limitations of time and our own humanity, we are also being invited into the divine work of God that uh, works through our limitations and invites us into infinite opportunities. But the infinite opportunities are not always about how you and I can be better producers Amen. Uh, better uh, 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 cogs in the wheels and the machinery of systems and, 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 and principalities of this world. No, there is an opportunity for you and I to ask ourselves, God, how must I live in this moment, in this season, and allow my life to literally get back into alignment with your ways, with your passions, with your responses to both the troubles we face and the victories we will experience. I want you to know, child of God, that there is timing uh, that is divine and there is timing that is not. And sometimes we can mix up the timing and think that God is doing this at a particular time when in actuality it is not God's timing. It is someone else's timing. It is the timing that does not align with where we are being called to be faithful to. And so in this moment, child of God, I want to invite you to <clears throat> think with us about what does it mean for you and I to enter into a time of refreshing where we are not just about moving through the motions of making New Year's resolutions and, 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 and making these claims and aspirations that 
are esoteric and unattached to a divine plan or source. But we as God's people sitting on the precipice of the intersection of all of these appearances of God, these challenges of our culture and our time and place, that God is inviting you and I into a season where we literally can experience refreshing, as the text says, from the presence of the Lord. And I want you to know, child of God, that there is an opportunity for you and I, even in 2022, among all the challenges that we have, to find a space where we can access the presence of God. The, the, the heartfelt space where we know God will meet us, where we know God will minister to us. God will touch us. God will speak to us. God will respond to us so that we in return can speak words of life to others. So we can in return uh, minister to others so that we in return can literally with the same grace that God has shown to us, show that grace to the world. And this is why this theme of refreshing uh, resonated with so many of us on the pastoral team, because we believe that before we jump into uh, trying to get back to a sense of normalcy or even create a new normal, we may need to spend some time hitting the refresh button in our life. Mm -hmm. We may need to spend some time slowing the process down, uh, not becoming paralyzed, uh, not becoming immobile, but slowing the process down so we can give ourselves some time of refreshing by being in the presence of the Lord. Oh, uh, and, 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 and so there are three ways that uh, we're talking about refreshing this year. We're talking about rest and we're talking about healing and we're talking about refreshing and 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 so I, I I'm, I'm I'm encouraged by this first idea around rest that we have identified and and I want you to know child of God that when we are talking about rest we are not talking about you and I just taking a year-long nap praise God amen I, I mean I, I I have become uh through social media aware of the nap ministry, the NAP ministry, and where, where, where literally there is this encouragement uh, for us to, 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 to ensure that the, the clocks of our bodies are, are literally being uh, attended to. Why? Because sleep deprivation can create all kinds of physical, mental, emotional challenges. And so I am aware that some of us need to uh, discipline ourselves with more sleep and more rest. But I want you to know, child of God, that when we are talking about rest theologically, uh, that God is inviting you and I into a place of rest. Huh? And, 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 and theologically rest uh, is, is not uh, about you taking a nap, although it's good for you, amen, to get the necessary sleep you need. Amen. But we're not just talking about you taking a nap. We're talking about what does it mean, uh, as it says in Hebrews chapter four, verse nine, that there remains a rest for the people of God. For those who enter God's rest also cease from their labors as God did from his. And verse number 11 is my, my favorite uh, kind, of, kind of admonition to all of us who are pursuing rest. It says, so let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest. Uh, the, the good old King James Version, it says, let us therefore labor to rest. Ooh, and I, I want you to know, child of God, that this is quite the dichotomous uh, 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 linguistic uh, 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 appropriation or, or arrangement of words that we are being invited to, to rest. But the scripture says that we must labor to rest. We must strive with every effort to enter this rest. And so I want you to think about uh, when we're talking about a season of refreshing. that we're not just talking about rest from the point of view that you just need to kick up your feet and chill and disengage and unattach and become a hermit and isolate yourself. 
But theologically, rest is about what does it mean for us to find the equilibrium of our spiritual well-being in the place where God consistently dwells. I mean, it does indeed underscore the, 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 the bedrock uh, scripture we've just read that talks about how a time of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. So therein means that rest is literally about you and I getting clearer through our practices about how can we labor to rest? How can we make every effort to enter the rest of God? Rest rather than a cessation of activity can be seen theologically as a destination. It is literally a place in God where you can cease from needless activities. Rest is about you finding a place in God where worries don't penetrate the spiritual equilibrium of the Christ follower. Rest is a place where your vocation, your work of justice, your work of, of service, your work of teaching, your work of organizing, your work of, of being a caregiver, that all of these activities do not penetrate your spiritual equilibrium, that place where you are literally dwelling in the presence of God and you can maintain your rest. Oh, I want you to know that part of what the 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 early uh, 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 spiritual disciplines, uh, the 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 monks and the nuns and the the mystics, they always talked about practices that can help you find the rest of God. Find the place where God allows you and I, even among the busyness of our lives, to have what the psalmist says, a secret place. Lord, I wish I could talk to somebody about a secret place. Uh, ha have any of you ever, ever been aware of a secret place where you can go when all hell is breaking loose around you? You done slipped into a secret place. Lord, help us, help us to find a secret place, a place where we know that, God, I can retreat to this place. And I know that there's a little carve out where rest and where uh, 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 recharging and where renewing can happen. I dare you today to, to ask yourself, what kind of practices must I engage in in order to find my secret place of rest in 2022? That you cannot experience a refreshing without you having a secret place. And the practices that help you engage and, and, and get clear about your secret place are the disciplines like prayer, the disciplines like worship, the disciplines like fasting, the disciplines like abstinence, the disciplines like engagement, places and spaces where you know, God, I can find you in a secret place place. And in the book of Hebrews, when the writer talks about there remains a rest for the people of God, that you and I are being invited to, to ask ourselves, what are the activities I must cease from doing uh, so I can begin the practices that help me locate this restful place in God. Rest is the cessation of needless activities. Rest is the intentional effort to resist a Protestant work ethic that has so dominated the centuries long existence of this country. Rest is that which allows you to reject the exploitative and capitalistic endeavors that turn regular people created in the image of God into profit motive driven machines for a, a economic way of life that never fully accounts for the vibrancy and brilliance that you bring to the table. Somebody holler rest. Rest is planning Sabbaths in your weekly and seasonal lives. Rest is about you saying, I'm going to hit a pause button from time to time, and I'm going to tell this mean schedule of the Bay Area or wherever I live that you will not drive me into a place of exhaustion. 
Rest is getting to a place in your faith walk where you can become confident that come will, come what will or may, God will take care of me. God will take care of that which concerns me. And so while I, even if I have to cry through this season, I'm going to cry in a resting place. Even I have to ask God some questions through this season, I'm going to ask God those questions from a place of rest. I am going to find a secret place where I can rest and allow refreshing to come, not just and find me, but I find it through the practices I engage in. And so that is one of the things we hope to open up this season. How do you and I labor to rest? How do we find secret places? How do we, uh, how do we carve out moments in our daily and weekly, monthly, seasonal schedule so we can enter? The rest of God. Oh, the second thing that we're going to focus on is healing. And I know healing, again, is uh, uh, another one of these interesting buzzwords. But, you know, in the church that we grew up in, amen, we, we understood healing as the supernatural activity of God. We, we, we boldly proclaim Jehovah Rapha, uh, Exodus chapter number 15, that, that God introduces God's self to the children of Israel and says, I am the God that healeth you. Huh, Jehovah Rapha, that healing was not just about you getting uh, uh, some, some work done on the edges. Healing was about a radical interruption of God's power to make things. Things that are obviously broken and hurting, God has the ability to introduce healing. And how many of you know in a materialistic world, a world where we have uh, become focused on the material, we have used logic and, and intellect and all of these things are tools that I embrace, things that I, I, I lean into uh, more than I lean into almost any other things aside from my faith in Jesus. I am a lover of knowledge. I'm a lover of, of wisdom. I'm a lover, amen, of, of education. I often tell my organizing people, young folks I mentor, that if you're not reading, you don't have much to say. Amen. Because we are a discursive people. We are a people who literally inherit the narratives and the stories and the wisdom, both folk wisdom and the learned, if you will, in academies. All of that helps to contribute to the kind of ways in which we make sense of the world. But I want you to know that we should never become so learned. We should never become so smart that we box out the supernatural interventions of God in our lives and in the world. That healing is about the ways in which God invites a wholeness. Hmm. A radical wholeness into our lives. And I want you to know that healing works best. Listen to this. When injury is surfaced and targeted practices are applied. There are some of us who are asking God for healing, but we have yet to be specific about the injuries we have because we've not taken the time to identify the hurt, identify the, 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 the vulnerabilities. And so we just ask God for healing generally. And I want you to know that sometimes the process of healing requires some particularity, some specificity of that which ails you to be surfeited so targeted practices can be applied. I want you to know that God declares all through uh, the scriptures that healing is part and parcel of what he seeks for us, for our families, for our communities, for the world, that healing is what God desires for us that God has no pleasure in our dysfunction, in our sickness, in, in that which, 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 which uh, causes us to be less than whole. But God works through that which ails us. 
This is why COVID-19, though uh, terrible, tragic, and difficult of a season this has been, the loss, the grief, the transitions, all of these things have been tumultuous, yet I still see God working through these things to provide healing to those who can't ascertain the appearance of the healer. And I want you to understand that God supernaturally heals. Amen. Meaning that God works through God's power alone. And, 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 and it is often then described as a miracle. And I want you to believe, child of God, that we should always expect miracles. Yet we should rarely imagine that they are exercised. Because that's what makes it a miracle. Amen. It's not a miracle that you wake up every day and breathe. Amen. Why? Because that is a function of that which God has already placed in order and in, 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 in motion. But there are moments where you need a divine interruption and God will work alone. But I want you to know that there is a participatory healing. Somebody say participatory healing. There is a participatory healing that should rarely be forsaken, yet always yield results. So if supernatural healing should always be expected, yet rarely exercised, we should appreciate that participatory healing should, all, should rarely be forsaken and always yield results. That just means that God partners with us to heal ourselves and one another. That God is, is, is using us to help heal ourselves. God works through us to help heal one another. God works through the we to help heal the world, which reflects God's intent around wholeness. And that's why you and I, in 2022, as we continue to seek moments of refreshing, we ought to believe that part of our refreshing will be about ongoing healing, participatory healing, that we ought to go to the doctor in 2022. You ought to find you a doctor that you can trust, that, that, that you can build a relationship with. And, and I don't take for granted that some of us don't have health care and some of us don't have access to, to, to doctors who have cultural uh, 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 nuances to the ways in which we see the world. But I want you to know that there are clinics and there are doctors and there are medical professionals who are bathed in the cultural distinctions of all all of us and, and some of these folks like Dr. Noha at the Roots Clinic or, or a few others throughout the Bay Area, these are individuals that we can literally engage as ongoing healers in the participatory work of God. You ought to go see a therapist, amen. And you know here at The Way we're big on therapy and, and emotional healing, psychological healing. God works through therapy. Uh, you ought to visit a nutritionist. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm, I'm so grateful uh, that, that, that in this, this COVID journey, I've, 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 I've tried to change my diet and, and Brother Anthony is working me out multiple times a week, helping me to, amen, you know, get, get uh, these, uh, I think we talked about 600 muscles in our body, and I probably only got 10 of them working at the present time. Amen. But but there's something about nutrition and something about uh, exercise and something about the ways in which we can be participatory in our healing. And I want you to know that healing is an important part of refreshing. Me and Nyla were watching the Avengers. She loves watching Avengers. We were watching the Avengers. And, and there was a part in the movie that I had never tripped off before. One of the Avengers got harmed by uh, one of the fights they were in. And they brought out a healing chamber. And they put the Avenger in the healing chamber. And the time spent in the healing chamber literally rebuilt tissue and healed the wounds that he had experienced. And it made me ask the question, as I was thinking about this message today, what is the healing chamber we are creating in 2022 that can literally help us be healed and heal one another? Ooh, what kind of healing chamber are we creating through our relationships with God, with, with, 
the, our, our, our fellowship here at The Way, with our relationships with one another, with our therapists and our doctors, uh, with, with economists that we, we trust. What kind of healing relationships are we creating where we can indeed, when those who are ailing, they can find wholeness through the relationships in the house of God? A year refreshing is not just about finding the place of rest. It's also about finding the healing chambers that we must create in order to be faithful. And then the last thing I'll say is that we must be people who are clear about the need to refresh the page of your life. Uh, we, 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 we had a great time talking about this idea of hitting the refresh button, this idea that just like you may have on your phone or on your iPad or on your desktop, uh, a page that has been up too long and, and, and that page that has been up too long does not lose the information that it brought up the first time you brought that page up, but sometimes hitting the refresh button allows that page to literally update itself with new information, update itself with new pictures, update itself with new colors and, and new layouts. Why? Because sometimes the page of life you're on has lost its relevance. And how many of you know there's a need for you and I to hit a refresh button? A refresh button just means, uh, like 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, that although the outward person is wasting away, inwardly there's a refreshing and a renewing that's happening day by day. And if you and I can't learn how to hit the refresh button in our life, the newness that God is trying to do inside of us may not work its way all the way out to the external realities. And I am convinced that we need a refresh button in the United States of America. We need a refresh button in Oakland, California, and Berkeley, and San Francisco, and Richmond, and all areas in between. We need a refresh button. We need new information. We need new updates. We need things that will cause you and I to not be caught in the mundane the outdated responses, the conspiracies and the, the, the fear-based narratives that keep you and I from seeing the possibilities of refreshing. The dare I say God in 2022 is inviting you and I to hit a refresh button that comes from being in the presence of the Lord. It is indeed the case, child of God, that hitting refresh, it should give you new eyes to see. Hitting refresh should give you new ears to hear. Hitting refresh should give your imagination a new canvas. As Bishop Macklin powerfully says, that we can paint God's divine best for today and tomorrow. You and I must see this time of refreshing, not just as a season for consecration, a season for the first several months as we enter into Lent, but literally a year-long commitment. God, I need to enter your rest. God, I need to pursue healing, both the, the supernatural divine healing that comes from you, but also the participatory healing that you provide. And I need to hit refresh in my life because I've been working with some information that has become outdated. Your presence, oh God, is the most relevant, life-giving source I can ever be connected to and there are moments where I must refresh myself. I love the image of water that is associated with our theme for this year because it literally signifies that refreshing is about cleansing ourselves, being washed anew, being literally made whole. 
this is what I hope we can as the community of the way and our extended family and friends. We can experience a time of refreshing. Come on, God, we ask you today to refresh us. Make us, Lord God, a people who can prioritize laboring to rest, entering your rest. Help us to be a people who understand the value of healing, both through your divine power and also through the participatory partnering that you will do with us, both with ourselves and in the world. And help us, God, to see the moments of refreshing the pages of our lives so we can be up to date with what you're doing in the world and certainly within us. God, make us new. Make us brand new. Lord God, begin to break up the fallow ground and tear away those things, Lord God, that need not follow us into this new season of continuous appearances that you will make. But show up in our lives in ways that bring life, that bring wholeness, that bring refreshing. And we'll say thank you, Lord, for it. And so I pray for the child of God who is under the hearing of my voice that needs to make a decision to follow you today. I pray, God, that you will open up a secret place in their heart, Lord God, where you will meet them through fellowship, through intellectual inquiry, through the worship, Lord God, through the studying of your scriptures, through the, through the ability of us to be in relationship with one another. Save those, Lord God, who are far from you today. Those who have experienced the hurt of the, the church, the, those who have experienced the hypocrisy, Lord God, of too many of us believers, those who have experienced, Lord God, the disappointments of COVID and death and transitions. Lord, all of these realities, Lord God, at times they bring a barrier and an obstacle, but I pray today, God, that, Lord, a time of refreshing would afford them to see you anew so they may know, God, that in your presence, refreshing happens through connection with you. So we as your body, Lord God, we remember the sacrifice that you have made for us and we want to say thank you Lord God on this the first Sunday of the year we want to take the moment and the time Lord God to honor your sacrifice to honor the body and the blood to honor and to remind ourselves that it is Lord God your body it is your blood it is the sacrifice that you have made it gives us strength from day to day and it never loses its power God bless you, people of the way. This year is a season and a time of refreshing in the name of the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name.